Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So, continuing on from our last video where we went through the basic circuit laws going over KVL and KCL. If you haven't watched that one, go back and watch it. Um, I just wanted to add as well that as I was preparing for nodal analysis and mesh analysis, I realized there are still a couple of other things that we need to keep in mind. So, I'm just going to add another section that we're just going to go through here. So, in this video, we'll go through, we can call it some other like basic things that we have to keep in mind when we're doing circuit analysis All right so let's maybe we'll call it things to remember to remember okay let's carry on so here in the last video we ended on kco equations and stuff like that so let's here yeah. things to remember all right and then i want to start off with combining current and voltages so Combining, we've touched previously on combining resistors, so this time I want to get onto voltage and current and sources. Okay, cool. So let's first touch on voltage, and what I mean by combining voltage sources and current sources is let's we'll draw a circuit. We'll draw a circuit. Okay, so these are obviously these two voltage sources are obviously in parallel, and then we'll do a series one as well. Okay, so how would you combine these two batteries? So if you can imagine that you had a circuit with a resistor there, let's so say we had a lamp here, and then another resistor here, there, and then likewise resistor, lamp resistor okay so how would you redraw these two circuits so when it comes to doing voltage sources in parallel you can never put two voltage sources in parallel with different voltages so you have to remember that the voltages in in two parallel branches so for example um let's go the voltage here is the same as the voltage here which is the same as the voltage here, which is the same as the voltage here, right? Because the voltage difference here to here is the same as it is here to here. You have to just, just keep that in mind that you can never put two different value voltage sources in parallel. The the voltages in, pa in branches that are in parallel to one another are always going to be the same. The one way that we can redraw this particular circuit is we can get rid of both of them. Get rid of this, get rid of this, and just make it one. I mean, that's not going very well. Yeah. So whatever they, whatever the value was. So if those, if that value was X, meaning if it was I don't know, if it was ten volt, ten volts, then this one would now be ten volts or X. And then when it comes to voltages in series, well then. The potential, the voltage here is going to be the lowest, right? And it's going to be the highest here, right? So if the voltage here is, let's say it's a, let's say zero volts. Let's say you had a ground node here, right? So the voltage here is zero volts. If this is five volts, then the voltage here, meaning the potential difference between here and here is what? Five volts, right? Then now if this here is five is five volts as well then the voltage difference between here and here is five volts right so the, what's the voltage difference between here this point and this point 10 volts right so what you do when you've got two voltages in, in two voltage sources in series is you add them together and so if this is 5 volts and this is 5 volts, then you can replace the whole thing with just one voltage source, which is 10 volts. Cool. So with voltages in parallel, right, must be the same. So therefore, you had two voltages like this, and together, 
10 volts and volts then that's the same equal to one voltage source of 10 volts cool and then voltages in, in series let's uh do this voltage voltage get yeah, 10 volts and 10 volts then that's the same as one 20 volt battery Hopefully that makes sense. So let's move on to current sources now. Current sources. All right. So when it comes to combining current sources, um, if you don't know, this is what a current source looks like, like that, right? So let's do it in parallel first. Two current sources in parallel, and then two in series. Okay, so current is just it's like it's the opposite of voltage basically in terms of its behavior. So when you've got two current sources in parallel, you just add them together. So you add together. And then similar to voltage in parallel, current sources in series, they must be the same. Be the same. So therefore you can just replace that. So let's say that if this is one amp and one amp then that is equal to just one amp and here if, if you've got three amps and two amps then that is equal to one five amps also it's just basically reversed yeah all right let's crack on um okay so let's move on to dividers and what I mean by dividers is um, voltage dividers, voltage dividers, and then current dividers, which we'll touch on after this. So we've got voltage dividers. So if you think about a standard voltage divider circuit, you've got resistor R1, and then you've got resistor R2. And so what a voltage divider circuit is, is that if you took... I don't know, let's say you plugged in some wires here. And you took this voltage here. This one here would be called V out. And so the voltage divider is that, you know, what's the difference between these two, the voltage between these two resistors, right? So the formula for voltage divider is V out, right? And that is equal to voltage in. So, for example, the voltage that you're putting that that's here. There you could say here V in. All right. Let's move this. The V out is equal to the voltage that's put in multiplied by the resistor which we're looking at, which is R two. R2, all of that divided by the sum of the two resistors value is there in series. So R1 plus R2. All right, you can put that one in brackets if you want. And so that's how you're going to find out what the, this voltage is here. This V out. Cool. Okay, so let's touch on current divider. So current divider is basically how the current travels through the different branches. So if you can, let's imagine we've got voltage source here, and then we've got two parallel branches of resistors, right? So we can go R1 and R2. So if we've got a current I leaving the battery, right? Let's think about a bunch of electrons. So we've got some electrons firing down here, right? Going this way. So when they get to this point here, what do we, what do they do? Do they continue going this way? Do they come down this way? Or do they split? The answer is obviously that they split, right? So how do we work out how they split? In what proportion? Is it you know um three of them go here and seven of them go there? So thirty percent go this way, seventy percent go that way. No, it doesn't obviously work like that. But the way that we find that out is using 
current divider calculation. So what we say is that the current that's in I1, so the current that comes down this way, right, is equal to the value of the resistor that we don't want, which is this one here, R2. Right, so it's equal to R2 divided by the sum of the two resistors. These two, yeah? So R1 plus R2. And then all of that times by the input current, which is current here. This current here, right? And then the exact same thing for I2. We say that I2 is equal to the resistor we don't want, which is R1 divided by R1 plus R2 times by the, the input current. Cool. And then so you might be asking now, how do you find out then the, the imp, this input current here? So then what you would do is you would combine these two resistors, which we've touched on already. Um, you would do the product divided by the sum. So you would do, you know, R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. That would give you the total resistance. And then you would then use that total resistance, V equals IR, the Ohm's law equation to find out the value of I. And then you'd have the total, you'd get this value here. And then you could use that here, right? Okay. And then the final thing, um, and actually, you know, we'll cover some more things. Let's touch on let's touch on power. So moving on to power now, which is a slightly different topic. Just three equations that you need to keep in mind, just in case you get some power power questions, which I definitely did in my exam. So power, finding out power dissipation, it's equal to the voltage multiplied by the current, right? The so power is equal to V times I. Yep. Okay. Now, if you think about it, what I, so you can say, for example, P is equal to V times I, then what you can do is you can actually manipulate this equation. So, all right, so let's go back to our triangle equations again, right? So you got, let's go two triangles, right? Let's do our Ohm's law, V is equal to I R, right? And then what we've just said here is that P is equal to V times I. So what we can do is we can take we can take any one of these these two, right? So V and V and I, and we can replace them with their equivalent. So we can take V and replace it with I R. So that new equation would be, or that new triangle, let's say, for example, would be P at the top, and then it would be I down here, and it would be what I R in here. You get that? So we're taking this V. And we're replacing it because we know that V is equal to IR. So then we're just substitu substituting in IR. So that would be good if we didn't have the voltage, for example. Again, we can do the same thing with I. So if we've got P and we've got V, if we wanted to swap out I, well, then we know from here, we know that from here, I is equal to V divided by R. So we can literally just put in here V divided by R. So now we know, for example, if you look at this equation here, we can say that P is equal to I R times I. And we can say that P is equal to over here from this equation, V is equal to, I'm sorry, P, P power is equal to voltage times voltage divided by resistance. Cool. And so what that will basically give us is two equations. We've got P is equal to I squared times r and we've got p is equal to v squared divided by r or you could write that as squared by r All right and so these are basically the power manipulation equations and then the third, the first one being obviously p is equal to v times i which is what we've got up here so if you can just keep in mind and remember these, this will be very useful because you're going to probably get some sort of a, uh, questions or even you have lots of instances when you're dealing with actual electronics whereby you might not, for example, know the current or if, if you wanted to figure out what fuse you wanted to put into a device, you had a power rating, you know, 2.4, 2.5, 2.6, 2.7, 2.8, 2.9, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 
kilowatts and you knew your voltage being 240 uh, volts then you knew you'd know that the current needed would be 10 amps so you could use a 10 amp fuse or a 13 amp fuse so yeah it's, it's important to these are these these power equations they're important to know okay all right so let's just wrap this up with just i mean you this should already know this but it's always something to keep in mind as well is that if you've got some components in series here like this right and if you had some let's say you had some resistors in parallel forgive my drawings okay so what could you say about the voltage right and the current about these two circuits right so i haven't given you any information but what could you say about it and what i'm trying to get out here is that in terms of which one of these have the same current different voltage which one has different voltages same current you should be should be fairly obvious hopefully you, you, you're comfortable with this i'm just doing a different color so here in the series circuit you've got the same current right through each resistor this the same current goes through all of them but the voltage drop across each resistor will be different because the voltage here is different to the voltage here so you're going to have same current different voltage right and then here as we've mentioned already when you've got electrons coming along here they don't all just go this way some go down here some will go down here and then some will continue on this way so what that, te what that tells you is that you're going to get different current so here the current here is going to be different to the current here it's going to be different to the current here but what we do know is that the, pot the potential difference of voltage here if you put a voltmeter here the potential difference here and here is the same here and here is the same here and here is the same here and here so what we can say is that we've got, we're going to have different currents and same voltage so that's it that's i'll end this video on this this is a it's a bit of a messy but hopefully nice way of understanding that in terms of components in series they're always going to have the same current but they'll have different voltages and in terms of in parallel you're going to have this uh, same voltage but different currents so again it's just flipped all right and then so i feel like now we know enough to be able to go into nodal analysis so we'll jump onto nodal analysis net next and yeah that this is when we actually start getting into actual circuit analysis now so it should be fun all right